Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Barreo, the Director of Bariatric Surgery at Monmouth Medical Center. I'd like to welcome you today to see our new patient seminar regarding surgical options that we offer. As a little introduction, I'd like to tell you that this program was started by me approximately 20 years ago, and since then we've developed and expanded the practice and offer not just primary surgeries, but also all sorts of revisional and complicated procedures. So why choose Monmouth Medical Center? Well, we were pioneers in minimally invasive bariatric surgery starting 20 years ago. I was the first surgeon in this part of the state to do laparoscopic bariatric surgery, and we also have some of the highest experience performing thousands of cases over the years. All our surgeons are fellowship trained in laparoscopic and bariatric surgery, which means that after they fulfilled their general surgery residency, they did additional training to learn advanced techniques. We have a fully accredited, nationally recognized program that has one of the lowest complication rates. In addition, we have our own dedicated floor for bariatric patients, the appropriate equipment, ancillary staff, and a full multidisciplinary group. I would like now to move forward towards a slideshow, which fulfills the first requirement for our program. Struggling with um, excess weight can be very overwhelming. It can affect self-image, social biases, and also contain certain health risks. Now, obesity is not a lifestyle choice. It is a complex disease and multifactorial. Now, the goals of this talk is, number one, to describe obesity and health-related effects of obesity, and also to describe the different weight loss surgical options that we offer you at Monmouth Medical Center. In addition, we'll talk about risks and benefits of the surgical procedures, We'll also um, go over insurance requirements and how to guide you through this whole process. This information session is just to give generalized information. We're not going to talk about specifics. If you want a personalized consultation, please call and we'll uh, see you in our office. So why choose Monmouth Medical Center? Well, first of all, this is one of the oldest programs in the state of New Jersey. I started doing bariatric surgery 20 years ago, and since then we've expanded on procedures, we've pioneered many new techniques, and have an excellent and stellar track record. In addition, we made this a seamless process. From the point you enter to the point you're done with your surgery, we guide you along all the steps. So what is morbid obesity? Typically, we look at patients that are over 100 pounds over their ideal body weight, but we use what's called body mass index to quantify whether they qualify. Now, body mass index is typically a number that just reflects not how much muscle or body fat you have, but it's a ratio of your height and your weight. And when we look at patients that qualify for obesity surgery, you must have a body mass index of over 40 or 35 with medical conditions. So the easiest way is to use one of these charts where you can put your weight and your height and see the number. If you go on Google, you can type in BMI calculator, put that information in, and you will get a number. If it's 35 with medical issues, you qualify, or if it's 40 with no medical issues, you also qualify. So what are different perceptions of society? In the past, Obesity was thought to be a weakness, a weakness of willpower, inability to lose the weight because the person didn't want to. We now know that's not really true. As a matter of fact, obesity causes many medical conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, and sleep apnea. By undergoing weight loss surgery, those issues can be completely resolved. So what are the impacts of obesity? Well, first, there's social impacts. There's also economic implications. There's prejudice in the work environment. But the most important thing is the medical and health implications. You see a higher incidence of coronary artery disease, strokes, diabetes, certain cancers, infertility rates, etc. So there's an entire gamut of medical issues that occur as a result of the obesity. So what are the options? Well, first line option is always diet and exercise. And most people attempt that and ultimately, it fails when the body mass index is at a high number. Some even go to have medical management with medications to lose weight. But again, once the weight comes back on, they're in the same situation. So ultimately, surgery is the definitive answer. And for patients who fulfill the criteria, it is the best choice. So what does research say? Well, medical treatment is ineffective once the body mass index is over 35. And we know that from many studies. And bariatric surgery has been proven to be the only effective method of sustaining long-term weight loss once your body mass is over 35. Safety and risks. We know the significant improvements after bariatric surgery with the body's metabolic function. In addition, we do these operations through little incisions. These little incisions afford the patient a much quicker recuperation time 
and back to normal activities uh, better than the old-fashioned large incision. In addition, the complication rates are very low. Matter of fact, these operations have a lower complication rate than conventional gallbladder surgery. The benefits far outweigh the risks, and the patient can expect to extend their life expectancy by 10 to 12 years. Medical comorbid conditions. What this means is medical problems, and the typical medical problem would be diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, and joint issues. The main reason to undergo the procedure is to resolve the comorbidities. So who's a potential candidate? Typically, it's as mentioned earlier, 100 pounds overweight, or a body mass index of 35 with medical problems, or a body mass index of 40 with no medical issues. Age is typically 18 or older, and you must have failed conservative management, such as diet and exercise. If you have health issues, that's one of the biggest benefits of undergoing the procedure. So having medical problems is not a contraindication to having these procedures. And also, there should be no psychologic contraindications for the procedure. You must understand the risks of the procedure and also agree to be compliant with our post-bariatric regimen. You will also require psychologic screening to ensure that you will be able to move forward with the program. Also, you must understand the risks and complications and be compliant with our diet and exercise program. Insurance requirements. You have to fulfill the criteria for the ASMBS, which is the minimum body mass index of 35 with medical problems or 40 with no medical conditions. And also, you need a letter of recommendation from your primary care physician, and if necessary, further evaluation by a cardiologist, pulmonologist, or endocrinologist. You are also required to see your primary care physician for full evaluation, and if necessary, further testing will be ordered. We also would like you to attend two patient support group meetings prior to surgery. I would like to introduce Dr. Gurdeep Matheru, who's a bariatric surgeon in our program, to talk about the different surgical options that we offer. Hi, I'm Dr. Matheru. I'm one of the bariatric surgeons at Monmouth Medical Center in Long Branch, New Jersey, and I'm going to be talking about some of our surgical options for weight loss surgery. When we talk about weight loss surgery, they can be broken down into two different types of procedures. They are called restrictive procedures and combination procedures. The restrictive procedure is one where we limit the amount of food that your stomach can hold. Along with that, there are some metabolic changes that occur in the body to help with weight loss. The combination procedure builds on the aspect of limiting the food that enters your stomach by adding some malabsorption from the small intestine. What that means is, the calories that you eat are not all taken into your body. There are different procedures and we will go into them in the next couple slides. When we talk about surgery, there's two different ways of accessing the abdominal cavity. In the first generation of bariatric surgery and weight loss surgery, the operations were done by making a large incision in the abdomen. We call that a laparotomy incision. That left patients with large scars, higher chances of wound infections, many developed hernias after, and they had increased pain and time off of work and had delay in getting back to their normal activities. As surgical technology and training progressed, we moved on to minimally invasive surgery, otherwise called laparoscopy. That involves multiple small incisions in the abdomen. This lowers the chance of having wound infections. It lowers the chance of having hernias. Patients have minimal pain and along with the minimal pain, it means they're up, walking, and getting back to their normal activities much sooner. The scarring is also better from a cosmetic standpoint as well. All patients require some testing to be done in the preoperative time period. After your first consultation with us, you'll be given a prescription for blood work, an ultrasound of your abdomen, and one for an upper endoscopy. Some of these tests may need to be repeated prior to your operation. Depending on your other medical problems, you may be asked to go see other doctors as well. Some common physicians that we ask patients to see are cardiologists, lung doctors, and endocrinologists. The first procedure that will be discussed today is the sleeve gastrectomy. 
Now, this operation is the most common weight loss procedure being done across the world. It involves removing a portion of your stomach. About 80% of the stomach is removed, and this limits the amount of food that can fit into your stomach when you eat. The resulting volume of the stomach is anywhere between 50 to 100 milliliters. And this helps you along with exercise to lose weight. The part of the stomach that is removed also contributes to hormonal regulation of hunger. When that is removed, you tend to have less cravings and feel less hungry, again, assisting you in losing weight. With this procedure, everything you do eat does get absorbed in the small intestine. When we talk about risks for surgery, and specifically for the sleeve gastrectomy, the risks include bleeding, infection, injury to nearby structures. Some things you may hear about are called staple line leaks. These are very rare complications that can occur after this operation. The other things you need to know are that this operation is not reversible. Once the stomach is taken out, there's no way to put it back in. Heartburn and reflux may occur after this operation or could get worse if you have it pre-existing. When we talk about the advantages of a sleeve gastrectomy compared to some of the other operations that exist for weight loss, one thing you should know is that the absorption is normal. So everything you eat will get absorbed. There's less risk of having nutritional deficiencies with this operation. When comparing this to other operations such as the gastric banding, there is no need for adjustments. With this operation, the comorbid conditions that go along with obesity resolve. On average, we expect about a 60% excess body weight loss after a sleeve gastrectomy operation. Now, I'm going to introduce Dr. Steven Binnenbaum to talk about the gastric bypass operation. Hello, my name is Steven Binnenbaum. I'm uh, one of the bariatric surgeons here at Monmouth Medical Center, and I'm going to talk to you uh, today about ruined white gastric bypass operation, which is one of the operations we offer here in our program. Ruin white gastric bypass operation uh, is one of the oldest bariatric surgical options and it's been around since 1960s. It is considered to be a gold standard operation for weight loss surgery. And uh, in short, what it is is we modify the way that food is processed in your gastrointestinal tract. We accomplish that by first dividing the small intestine and bringing it up to a very small gastric pouch so the food is actually bypassing the stomach and the first portion of the small intestine called duodenum and a little bit of jejunum which is also part of the small intestine. Uh, by doing that the food is not going through a regular route where most of the absorption of calories and nutrients takes place. So instead of going through that loop it's going right into the small intestine from a small gastric pouch and then at a later distance in your gastrointestinal tract, that's where most of the digestion and absorption happens. Now the gastric pouch itself is very small and it can accommodate usually about 15 to 30 cc's of fluid. The stomach is not removed, in fact nothing is removed during the surgery compared to the other surgical uh, operations for uh, weight loss. And we bypass approximately six feet of the small intestine. The intestine, as I've described to you previously, is reconnected later down the line to begin digestion at that point. If you would look at the slide on the diagram, you'd see that there is a red arrow and a green arrow. And where they come together, that's where most of the digestion really begins. So when we talk about gastric bypass surgery, uh, you always have to consider when you're making that decision which operation you're really actually going to choose. There's advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of the gastric, gastric bypass operation are plenty. One of the most important advantages of gastric bypass is resolution of medical problems that you may have developed over the years prior to surgery, such as diabetes mellitus, hypertension, sleep apnea, and many others. We also lose over 80% of your excess weight, and that happens over a period of one year even sometimes longer than that to accomplish that goal. And some patients actually lose even more weight. Now we talked about advantages. What are the disadvantages or risks or possible complications that may occur following this operation? And these are important because a lot of patients have concerns 
and it's important for us and for you to be informed uh, about uh, these potential problems. One of the most common things that I hear about patients who are scared or, or have concerns undergoing gastric bypass is malabsorption. Is malabsorptions, malabsorption can happen, but it can only happen if you don't follow the appropriate directions after the operation. You have to eat right, be compliant with your diet. We have a nutritionist on staff who is constantly, monitor, constantly monitoring your progress and gives you the appropriate advice. And also, gastric by bypass patients have to take certain vitamins. It's not a lot of vitamins, but it's certainly a lot better than taking medication for diabetes or hypertension. As long as you follow those directions, malabsorption should really not develop. Another concern is a staple line leak. And staple line leaks or anastomotic leaks uh, that we usually refer to these problems, if you look at the other slide, there's a connection between the esophagus and the small intestine in the upper portion of the slide where the stomach is located. And sometimes you can have a leak at that connection. It's called an anastomotic leak. It happens very rarely. It happens less than 1% of the time, and it's correctable. Also, people mention dumping syndrome. Although dumping syndrome potentially can happen, but it's a very rare occurrence. And usually it's self-limiting and it's easily controlled by diet. There are also risks of intestinal irritation and development of ulcers. We call them marginal ulcers. It is particularly prevalent in patients who, for some reason or other, uh, uptake smoking after the operation or take non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications on chronic basis. And those are the two things that are really contraindicated for patients who choose to go with gastric bypass. There's also a small incidence of internal hernias and intestinal obstructions. And you have to keep uh, these risks in perspective. Most of these possible complications occur very, very rarely. And now as an overview, I'm just going to talk to you in general about surgical risks or risks of weight loss surgery. Now, there are a lot of advantages, as I mentioned to you previously, and there are also some of the disadvantages. What are the advantages? There's a rapid and large weight loss. Not necessarily rapid weight loss with all the surgeries. Some surgeries result in slower weight loss versus the others. But there is a lot of weight loss that you can accomplish uh, towards uh, the end of the year after the operation. And most importantly, it's the resolution of your medical problems. It is very, very good that you can lose the weight. And everybody feels great about that, and that's a, a very big accomplishment. But the most important benefit of all is resolution of medical problems. There is also an increased chance of sustained weight loss. In other words, if you are following the directions that we give you, if you are compliant with all the recommendations, you will be one of those people who is ultimately very successful and will be able to keep the weight loss in the long term. So to touch base uh, upon complications once again, there is a higher risk of developing nutritional deficiencies if you don't follow the nutritional recommendations or if you don't take your vitamins on a regular basis. And we do very careful monitoring of your progress after the operation. We do routine blood tests, we test for your vitamin levels, and you have regular scheduled meetings with our nutritionist uh, who's gonna help you and adjust your diet as you progress after the operation to make sure that you don't develop any uh, nutritional deficiencies. After the operation, all patients go to a designated floor in this hospital. Uh, and usually, no matter what the operation is, an average stay is approximately one day. You will spend the night after the operation in the hospital. The next morning, we're going to perform uh, an upper GI study, which will help us to identify the postoperative anatomy so we have it for future reference. After that study, you're going to go back to the floor, to your own room, and then we're going to start you on a standard bariatric protocol diet. And that entails usually four stages, and you will begin your stage one, which is clear liquid diet for the first seven days. And you're going to be discharged on that diet. And then usually patients follow up with us in the office uh, within a week after the operation. 
where we evaluate, evaluate how you feel, we examine you, we take, care, we take a look at your incisions, and then we make further plans of treatment or what to do next. The, there's a specified bariatric diet that I just spoke to you about. Uh, to be more specific, it's about 30 to 60 cc's of unsweetened, decaffeinated, non-carbonated fluids. Uh, sometimes you can have jello if you can tolerate that, and that will be your meal in the hospital with the sips of water. The discharge criteria usually is very simple. Most importantly, you have to feel good. And if you're ready to go, then certainly we, will, we want you to go home and recuperate there. Your vital signs have to be normal. You have to be tolerating your clear liquid diet. You have to, or we would prefer that you have return of bowel function and that your pain is adequately managed. Once you fulfill that criteria, you can certainly go home and we will see you in the office for post-operative visit. One of the most important aspects of weight loss surgery in our program is multidisciplinary support group meetings. And these are very important. They're offered monthly from 7 to 9 p.m. And you usually have to attend about two meetings before your operation. Attend as many actually meetings as you can because it helps you to develop relationships with other patients, uh, to discuss whatever concerns that you may have uh, with people around you who had the same experience. And that not only will prepare you for the operation, but also will help you with being compliant after your surgery. And you will develop long-lasting relationships. Our champions usually attend these meetings and on a regular basis share their experiences with you. There are multiple top topics of interest that are covered and sometimes we even have guest speakers because some patients are concerned with excess skin after the operation or they would like to have some surgical options from plastic surgery to see if there's anything else that can be done so that they look better. Providing, we're providing the ongoing clinical, emotional, and nutritional support and this is a very important aspect of this whole process. I want to leave you with a few, few things that you should think about. One of the most important things is that surgery may not necessarily be for you, and it's not for everyone. You have to really discuss those options with your family doctor, and most importantly with your family. And it's very important that throughout this whole process you have the support of the most closest people to you. If surgery is right for you, please follow the timeline of the required testing that we may ask of you during your first consultation. These things are necessary in order to make sure that you are safe during the operation and that there are no complications and the risks are minimal. So if you do have to see a cardiologist, please see a cardiologist right away. If we send you to a pulmonologist, do that as soon as possible. All surgeries have risks and, and all surgeries have benefits. So you have to be an educated consumer. So please do your own research. We encourage that. And this will prepare you to be a very successful patient. And you will achieve your goals much easier if you know what you're getting into. Please do not miss any of your appointments with us because this may, delay, this may not only delay your surgery, but result in cancellation of your surgical appointment. You'll be asked to quit any kind of smoking, uh, and in general, uh, if there's any vitamin deficiencies that you may have, we will do our best to help you correct that. All these operations that we offer for you are just tools for you to help achieve a healthy lifestyle. You have to be able to, to be willing to make the necessary adjustments in your behavior, in your daily lifestyle, in your consumption of food, in order for you to be successful. And whatever surgery you choose, that's just a tool that's going to help you get there. You must be committed to changing your way of life. So behavioral modification is the most important aspect of this entire experience. Now that you know a little bit more about our bariatric program, we welcome you to join us for and obtain necessary information that you may need. Please feel free to contact us 
at Monmouth Medical Center Bariatric Program. The telephone number is 732-923-6070. And thank you for joining us.